Hi, I'm Abhishek Muturu. And I'm Alex Chang. And we've been working on a project at the University of Toronto under the supervision of Professor Jackson and with the help of radiologist Dr. Barfett at the St. Michael's Hospital. This is early stage lung cancer detection, training a deep convolutional neural network with patches from synthetic frontal chest radiographs. Lung cancer is caused by abnormally behaving cells that either grow too fast or do not die regularly enough, causing them to grow into and destroy neighboring cells. These cells form tumors, which are commonly called nodules when they're less than 3 centimeters in diameter. As of 2018 in Canada, lung cancer has the highest projected incidence and mortality rate of all cancers, and also one of the lowest 5-year net survival rates with about 50% of diagnoses occurring during stage 4 of the disease when the cancer has already metastasized. Since early detection is crucial for good prognosis, this project focuses on the problem of detecting lung nodules in early stages. There are several diagnostic tools used by doctors and radiologists to detect lung cancer. In this project, we'll be mainly focusing on X-ray radiographs and CT scans. X-ray radiographs are an affordable and accessible method of visualizing a patient's body, which make them a common method for preliminary cancer screening. Radiographs are grayscale images that capture the amount of X-ray radiation remaining after traversing the tissues of the body, which have various attenuation coefficients. X-ray computed tomography, or CT scans, serve as manipulable 3D models of a patient's body and are reconstructed using X-rays taken from different angles. In this project, we create synthetic X-rays by inserting nodules into CT scans to generate a large, diverse data set to train a neural network to detect nodules. Due to the higher attenuation of bone tissues, they appear bright in the radiographs. In contrast, lungs, which consist of air mostly, appear dark since air has very low attenuation. To create the x-rays, CT scans, which are stored in Hounsfield units, are converted to attenuation coefficients using this formula. These are examples of radiographs without nodules. On the left we have a real one, and on the right we have a synthetic one that we generated using a CT scan. And these are some radiographs with nodules. On the left again we have a real one with a nodule, and on the right, we have a synthetic one that we generated by inserting an artificially grown nodule into a CT scan. Here we're scrolling through a CT scan. We can clearly observe a difference in radio density between the lungs and the other tissues. To detect nodules in a given radiograph, a deep convolutional neural network is trained to predict nodule presence. As in the classical example of attempting to classify whether an image contains a cat or a dog, the machine learning model is fed a large data set accompanied with the image labels. Each iteration, the parameters are tuned to optimize the model's predictions on future images. In our case, we want to detect whether or not a certain patch of the radiograph contains a nodule. We use the dense net architecture, which has a repeating block substructure, and many other advantages over traditional convolutional neural networks. Using full images as input, Raj Prakar et al. have reported state-of-the-art classification results in 2017, outperforming many radiologists using the publicly available Chest X-ray 14 dataset, which consists of over 112,000 images containing up to 14 anomalies visible on a chest radiograph. Despite the promising results shown by previous work done in the field, Several factors limit the accuracy of these learnt models. First, the chest X-ray 14 dataset provided by NIH was mined using a natural language processing model, which has its own error rate, although the accuracy of labels is estimated at over 90%. Second, the trained classifier accepted an input size of 224 by 224 pixels, a standard in the machine learning community to fit common GPUs, which is much lower resolution than the original 1024 by 1024 pixel images in the dataset. This reduction in dimensionality is accompanied by a significant loss of information, which could be especially relevant in the detection of faint features. Our new approach addresses these issues by generating synthetic data to classify patches, which are chunks of the original image. To synthesize a dataset of X-ray images, CT scans are used as a 3D model of the body. The traversal of X-rays through the body is simulated using Beer's Law. To simulate a diseased lung, a nodule is artificially inserted into the CT's voxel array. To select its position, 
the lung is segmented using a breadth first search algorithm, which simply consists of manually chosen starting points, which then discover adjacent neighbors respecting a lower and upper threshold. After randomly selecting its position, the nodule is grown with realistic size, radio density, and shape. We randomly generate a shape following this model of nodule growth, which captures its ability to locally migrate. This lobulated model can introduce variation and can be manipulated to fit various nodule properties. And the result is a radiograph with genuine diseased lungs. Finally, image processing is an important step in the creation of both synthetic and real x-rays to facilitate interpretation. Two well-known techniques are employed to automate this step. Gamma correction is first applied to rectify and darken the attenuation distribution, which is originally skewed towards brighter values. Then, contrast-limited adaptive histogram equalization adjusts each pixel value to improve local contrast and edge definition. Here's a chest radiograph before and after gamma correction and histogram equalization. As previously mentioned, the reduction of image dimension limits the information available to the classifier, which suggests the need for inputting smaller patches. In our method, we employ sliding window detection, a brute force approach for object detection, as it consists of going through each patch window of the image and predicting nodule presence at each one. Starting with a small CT scan library of only 35 volumes, the generation of synthetic dataset patches presents a solution to minimize the correlation between images. For each positive training example containing a nodule within the patch, a negative example of the corresponding region is provided to balance the dataset. With the realistic constraints in nodule growth, the produced patches can be difficult to classify even when told where to focus. However, with minimal hyperparameter tuning, the validation accuracy peaks at around 80%, which provides reasonable results in this exploratory phase. With the centers of high confidence patches highlighted in red, we observe the successful detection of the nodule in the synthetic x-ray image, with the exception of a few false positives marked by smaller red dots. In a real x-ray example, the obvious nodule is detected by multiple classification windows. Although there are several false positives, these can be reduced with data augmentation techniques. Several steps can be taken to improve our classification results. In addition to data augmentation, which is the simplest method of introducing variation, there are various modifications to be made to the convolutional neural network's architecture to optimize the learning model for a problem. In particular, the current network accepts resized patches duplicated across each of the RGB channels to utilize DenseNet's pre-trained model. The input dimension could be adjusted to accommodate a single grayscale channel, which matches the patch size. Finally, more appropriate pre-trained models could be utilized to take advantage of solutions to similar problems, a method referred to as transfer learning. In conclusion, the patch detection approach provides promising results to a difficult problem in radiology and computer vision. Using our method of data generation, a small library of CT scans can be amplified to provide a large, decorrelated dataset of nodule patches. We would like to thank the previous team that worked on this project. Thanks also to Professor Jackson for his supervision and Dr. Barfett for his guidance.